Hi everyone, my name is Peter, and we've got a video sponsored by Squarespace here, and four pens to look at. I found out about these about a month ago. Someone sent me a message on Instagram saying, Peter, can you check out these pens? They're $10, you get four pens. What's the deal? Like, that's pretty cheap for four, four pens. Uh, they're listed at like $9.99, right? So, per pen, that's... Two and one ninety nine, uh, one, two and a hundred ninety nine four hundredths of a dollar per pen, which is cheaper than even a lot of non fountain pens. People usually, we usually think of fountain pens being a little nicer in some way, but um, I mean I bought two packs just in case, you know. Um, here they are out out of the packaging. Look at that. Oh, it's okay if I drop them. I have spares. You get blue, pink, green, and gold, I guess. Here's the pink one. I've... My camera's trying to track my face. Here's the pink one that I've put some ink into. A lot of this pen looks very familiar to um, other pens you might have seen. The shape of the grip here, the shape of the nib, they're all EF pens and um, has familiar like piston mechanisms here, right? Look at that go. Doesn't post very well or at all, uh, but basically what I found out is that they've got the design down that's present in a lot of other popular pens, but pretty much where they save their money is that they must have just used the very cheapest materials available to them. And you can just tell by, just immediately when you pick it up, it kind of rattles. It feels cheap and light. And, uh, I mean, there are some metal elements there you can see. I don't know if you can see there's a little screw down there. I mean, there's some little metal bits, but it just feels cheap. And it was immediately leaking all over my hand multiple times while I was drawing. I had to get up and rinse my hand off. Thankfully, it somehow didn't get all over the papers I was drawing. Um, I did get a good drawing out of it. Like, the pen, the nib works. I mean, the nib is, a, I guess, a fairly simple, basic concept to, you know, put it there. The ink goes down, out, across the paper. That part worked fine. I've had very nice pens that were, that cost much more than two and a hundred and ninety-nine four hundredths of a dollar that, uh, didn't work as well as this pen for drawing lines but drawing lines is pretty much all that this pen does well all the other areas like feeling good being good quality not leaking that's where it falls down and falls apart I guess but it's very cheap and uh, I don't know there is a I think we've all noticed if you've been keeping up with fountain pens at all these days that there is a great preponderance and gathering and accumulation of of cheap fountain pens you know wish fountain pens alibaba so on and so forth so i mean you can find all sorts of these things out there these days uh if you don't want to invest in a slightly higher quality one it doesn't feel good i like it when a fountain pen feels good in your hand and i can't say that about these Okay, so here's a doodle I did with the purple pen that I filled up with platinum, black carbon ink, and then in the sponsored sec little sponsored doodle that I do, I did test a second pen, a green one, which I will admit didn't leak at all, and I even tried mixing it with some uh, colored Copic pens, Copic markers, which I haven't used in a while, and introducing the color in that little doodle did make me want to do it again in some future doodles, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, as far as the weather goes, I gotta admit, I'm I'm ready for it to start getting cold again. This, this usually happens. It's a classic case of the grass is always greener on the other side, or maybe it's just, I don't know, people only liking things for a little while. We enjoy change. As soon as, I know as soon as it gets cold again, towards the end of the winter, I'll be Wishing that it wasn't cold anymore, begging for summer, but now here that the summer has been, you know, going on for a little while, I'm I'm ready to wear pants again, to wear sweatshirts and, and jackets, uh, but 
I don't know, cycles, little year-long cycles like that. Maybe, I think I might be happy if the cycles were slightly shorter. Maybe instead of like 12 months, they were like 9 or 10 months. So maybe if we do find another Earth-like planet to move to that has similar seasons, uh, maybe if it just went around the sun, it, its local star a little bit faster, is that a, is that an option? Could we send that? Can we? Is there like a a request box on the NASA website? Shorter years, quicker seasons, or or maybe there are places on Earth where you can find that sort of thing. I don't know. So here's a little sponsor doodle I was talking about. Make sure you go to Squarespace and just scroll through all the templates they have that you can get started with, and they're easily customizable. Um, you can just like right click, add section, and they have like more things than I've ever been able to find a use for. Little modules you can add, drag around, resize, integrations for your social media, where, where you can have your social media automatically update your website or have your up your website automatically update your social media so you can like have it automatically post to everything it's just all tied together or maybe you want to have some e-commerce selling some things get your stuff started up i don't know what you want to do but uh basically it's going to look good no matter what you do because i haven't found any of their templates so far that look bad and it's hard to make them look bad so go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash peter draws for 10% off your first website or domain. Uh, lately, I've been working on this project. I don't have a lot of big overarching projects. Sometimes, I mean, usually most of my projects are just like one video at a time, but I have a project, which is another big book. Uh, sometimes I put out a book like every one or two years, like a bunch of my drawings, but this book is like 500 pages of my drawings, a big hard cover is that how you say it hardback hard cover book like a like a maybe as close as i'll get to a coffee table book right so it's like 500 pages it looks like a huge textbook but it's a drawing and i mean it's full of drawings and the thing is i want something more than just drawings in it to kind of tie it all together i don't know if i'm overthinking it maybe it just needs drawings but i'm also kind of I've started writing a little story just to, to put a few lines of at the bottom of each page, just like one little paragraph, like maybe just two to five lines at the bottom of each page. So it's still mostly drawings and art and the drawings will only maybe loosely or not at all re relate to the story, right? But it's just something to kind of have a loose thread tying the whole book together and because, you know, most of my drawings are not that related to each other. So I don't just want it to be like a loose, just... Uh, otherwise, I feel like it's just like a pile of drawings between, you know, bound together. Anyway, so so far this story is... Um, I think I've finished about one chapter so far, out of like ten, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You know how these things can change. So far it's a story about a sentient... I don't, I don't want to spoil it, but I will spoil it a little bit because it could change a lot so far. So far, it's a story about a, a sentient cave system. And uh, the main character, who is me, of course, or at least I write it in the first person, is uh, the main character lives above it in a hut on a cliff and finds out about the cave system from a, a friendly pigeon. And... Uh, and so then the main character invites uh, a ground penetrating radar team to come and try to map it out, map out the cave. And I think maybe like the, the radar, the, you know, the high fre frequency rate waves upsets the, the cave, which was more or less slumbering up until then members of the ground penetrating radar team disappear. And uh, just goes downhill from there. So that's what I've got so far with this story. I don't know. I've never really written a story before, so it could be like the next chapter will just be that, you know, like I run away to the city, but maybe the cave will follow me there. Hmm. I'm very afraid of like caves and stuff. Like I would never go into a cave. I don't know how like spelunkers and caves 
cave divers do it. So maybe that's why I'm writing about it. The cave is the antagonist. I don't really think the cave is evil. It just has a different point of view. But, um, you know, that's how it's going so far. I've been going to a local coffee shop near school before class to just get in some writing, you know, buy a coffee and like a like a cheese danish or a blueberry muffin or something and to type away on this just to, you know, get something written because it's, you know, you, you got to just write something. And if you never just sit down and start writing, it just doesn't happen, right? So if I just go away from all my distractions and everything in a little coffee shop, then it starts to happen. But I got to say this coffee shop called um, Tate Street Coffee, this seems like a hot spot for people that recognize me. Like probably four out of the last five times I've been there, people have recognized me. But they've been very polite about it. Like waiting until I'm getting up to leave like, hey, are you the guy that makes YouTube videos or whatever? So anyways, I guess uh, I, I don't know. It's like some sort of uh, alignment of natural phenomenon that leads. I don't know why that's the place. I guess I guess coffee shops. I guess I attract people that like coffee shops to my videos. I, I, it could be worse. Yeah, that's a nice thing. All right for coffee shops. All right, see you later, everyone. Good to see you. Have a good day. Goodbye. Take it easy.